So uh, thanks for taking the time to look at this video. We're going to have a look at um, continuity today and we're going to have a look at um, continuity of um, uh, protective bonding conductors, uh, continuity of uh, lighting circuits, this is a little two-way lighting circuit, and continuity of a ring main circuit, this is just a small ring main. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, first of all, you have to make sure everything's isolated, of course. Um, as you can see, this is already locked off and, and isolated. We did that in a, in a previous video, so everything is safe in here. Um, and the first test we'll do is, is we'll have a look at the um, continuity of the protective bonding conductor. This one is just a simulation just down to a, uh, a water pipe. In a normal household installation, you would have gas, oil, etc. So <clears throat> before you... Um, before you go to remove the bonding conductor, everything has to be isolated. Never remove a, never remove a bonding conductor without um, first isolating everything. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll start doing it because I know everything's dead and uh, everything's safely isolated already. I know already this is um, my protective bonding conductor for this water, uh, the water pipe. So. We'll go ahead and switch the dialog over to um, continuity. Wait for this to come on. It's on. And we'll just null these leads. Yeah, the bleep there just tells us it's nulled, so we can see now this is um, this is set to set to zero. So we can effectively yeah, carry on any tests now. Click onto the uh, crock onto the bonding conductor, onto the metal water pipe. Test. I'll try and get around here so you guys can see it. 0 0.01 ohms. So that's fine. And you'd expect that as well. This is such a short run. Um, in a house, you'd be expecting um, 0 0.05 ohms or less um, would be a good reading. Um, and that's based on a 10 millimeter squared um, bonding conductor and no more than 27 meters. If you look in the on-site guide, table 4.4, um, you'll see in there, it gives you a, um, a listing of um, CPC sizes in relationship to um, the main line conductor sizes. In fact, I'll put something, I'll, I'll put something in the video so you can actually see that, a snapshot of it, and we'll, we'll just have a little, little chat about that. So this is table 4.4 earthing conductor and main protective bonding conductor cross-sectional areas. This is taken from uh, the on-site guide. The minimum cross-sectional area, was, or CSA, required for the earthing conductor and main protective bonding conductors are given in Table 4.41 and 4.42, uh, which are shown below here in these uh, tables with 4.41 being the table for TNS supplies and 4.42 being the table for TNCS supplies. For TT supplies, it's it's actually on a different page in table 4.43, um, but yeah, if you want to have a look at that, you'll have to have a look at the on-site guide or buy a copy of it yourselves. Um, so this is just a little snippet that I said I would show you. So if you look at table 4.41, so the top table, so there's the top line shows you the CSA line conductor in millimeter squared. Um, the first column being six. Uh, you can see the CSA earthing conductor corresponding to that is also six millimeter squared, and the CSA protective bonding conductor is also six millimeter squared. If you take it to the complete extreme of that table, you can look at the CSA uh, line conductor in millimeter squared is seventy. The CSA a of the earthing conductor is 35 millimeters squared and the cross-sectional area of the protective bonding conductor is 25 millimeters squared 
So you can see there are some differences there as you move through the table. Uh, there's also some notes on this as well. Uh, protective bonding conductors, including earthing and bonding conductors of 10 millimeters squared cross-sectional area or less shall be copper. Um, <clears throat> the guidance note itself doesn't co cover anything other than copper, in fact, and it goes on to say that aluminium conductors or structural steel can be used if special precautions outside of the scope of this guide are taken. So you, you'd have to look elsewhere for um, anything other than uh, other than copper. There's also another note in here about the distributor may require a minimum size of earthing conductor at the origin of the supply um, of 16 millimeter squared copper or greater for TNS and TNCS supplies. It also goes on to say buried earthing conductors must be at least 25 millimeter squared copper if not protected against corrosion. 50 millimeter squared steel if not protected against corrosion. 16 millimeter squared copper if not protected against mechanical damage but protected against corrosion. 16 millimeter squared coated steel if not protected against mechanical damage but protected against corrosion. There's also a couple of other notes in here as well, but I'm not going to cover it now. Um, so let's get back to the rest of the video. Now, as soon as we've done that bonding conductor test, we um, we put that straight back in. Uh, we don't want to leave anything um, unterminated. So it's safer to have it re-terminated as soon as we finish the test. So that's what we'll do. And of course, the right thing to do, I'm just going to nip these up now, but um, use a torque screwdriver and um, use the manufacturer's settings just to torque all of these connections back up. Same on all the bars, the, the earth bar, uh, circuit protective conductor bar, neutral bar, and um, the same on the um, top of the circuit breakers there as well. Okay, so for... That's it for the um, main, that's it for the bonding conductors. What we'll do now is we'll move on to the lighting circuits. So we're just gonna test the continuity of the lighting circuit now. We already have the link in place between the line conductor and the CPC bar. So we're gonna test uh, between, obviously testing between R1 uh, and R2 here, R1 being the line conductor and R2 being the circuit protective conductor. So we're already cropped on to what should be the, the furthest point in the lighting circuit. And this is, uh, as we explained earlier, this is just a little two-way lighting circuit. So and this is the Dialogs um, test probe. So I can just click the test probe on here. It makes it a little bit easier. And I shouldn't have to get in front of the um, of the screen, which hopefully you can see. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's make the first test. Oh, oh, see if I can get on a little bit, a little bit better. Try again. It's only reading there. Reading there of uh, 0.67. So we'll go to the first switch. Flip that over. Expect that to go off, and it has. That's greater than 200 ohms. All right, next switch, the test. 0.27. Right, we expect this to be off again. Yep, greater than 200 ohms. On. 0.21 ohms. So we'll always record the highest reading that we uh, that we get on the circuit here. 
Um, now what we also need to do is go into the backs of the starting points and we'll just click onto the CPCs there. I'm just going to change this for a probe, black probe, but it doesn't make any difference. Um, so I go back onto the CPC at the back of the uh, light switch there, onto the light conductor again, click test. Point two three ohms. And the same with this one onto the CPC and onto the line conductor. And we have point not nine. Okay, so we record whichever reading is higher out of those on our um, scheduled test results. Um, so that's it for the um, for the lighting circuit here. Now we'll move on to having a look at the uh, the ring final circuit, the continuity of the ring final circuit. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the continuity of the ring final circuit. Um, we've already got the neutrals out, the um, line conductor and the CPCs are already taken out for the, the ring final circuit. So the test is done in three stages. First test being um, continuity of R1, which is effectively the line conductors. Then uh, little Rn, this is little R1, this is little Rn for the neutrals, and little R2 for the CPCs. And we record um, the resistance of those um, those conductors. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, test meter is already um, nulled out earlier. So it still holds that null. So we'll crock on to the line conductors. And get a good connection. <clears throat> Give them a little nip. And I'll try and get around it from this side. Hit test. You should be able to see there we have um, 0.02 ohms so that would get recorded on our um, test results sheet as um, little r1 flick over to the neutrals which will be a little rn Just make sure we've got them in the same the same position on the crop clips and give them a little nip as well. Yep, gotta get it out of the way and hit test. And you can see we have uh, 0.02 again, which is what we would expect because the, the conductors for line and neutral are the same size, the 2.5 millimeter squared and roughly the same length as well. Now what we'll expect with the CPCs, we expect those to be 1.67 times higher, uh, 1.67 times greater, because they're a smaller conductor. So these are 1.5 millimeter squared. Um, and how we arrive at the 1.67 times greater is, if you take 2.5 for the 2.5 millimeter squared, divide that by 1.5 millimeter squared, or 1.5, you'll get 1.67. So let's crock on to the CPCs. Again, try and get them in the same place, give them a little nip. Get them out of the way and repeat the same test again. Done. And you can see we have a higher result there. We're now looking at 0.05 of an ohm. So within, within tolerance of what we would expect. So you record that also on your schedule of test results. Um, so record the CPC reading, record little Rn and record little R1. The next stage is to go ahead and put together a figure of eight and I'll show you 
how we do that later. I'll put some, pull something up on the screen just to give you a better view of it. Um, effectively, we're just going to put these in a chocolate block. Um, and we take the neutrinos and the lines together. Um, and I'll show you the connection on the video. And we'll just do it now. I'll get a little chocolate block and we'll go ahead and do that. That's, this is going to be stage two. So this will be the neutrals, the lines, and then it will be the CPC with the lines. And this, once it's all tested through, will effectively prove polarity at the socket fronts here. And we also get the, the resistances as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we've uh, we've changed over the leads. We've just um, taken the crop clips off and put the probes on just so we can get onto the, um, the connector blocks here. And so we'll connect across and make the first test. And that is 0, 0.00. So it's such a short run and um, the resistance is really low so um, we're kind of expecting to get that um, and we'll show a calculation where you can actually see that on the video itself I'll, I'll add that in there later now I need to change these leads again I'm just going to swap this over for a, um, a plug top connection so we'll take this and add on the plug top connections now only connected in the neutral the black and the red for the iron conductor and we'll make this test here in front of the socket so that's a test we shouldn't get anything here because I've left the switch turned off so greater than 200 amps so that's correct we don't get anything turn that on and we have point three Two nine is dropping two eight. It's a little bit high, so let's just take that out again. Try that again. That's about point naught four ohms. Point naught three. We'll get rid of that. Point naught three. Try this one. Turn it on. Test. Point naught two. Point one three, so that's might just be a little bit of a bad connection. Let's try that again. Back on. Point one one still. Let's give that a go. Point naught six. Point naught five. So this is within. This is within tolerance anyway. Take it off. Point zero one. So again, that's all fine. So that's now proved continuity and part polarity because we've proved here with the line and the neutral collectors. So we've proved line and neutral on the front of each socket outlet. The next step is to prove the line and the CPC positions and fully prove polarity and fully fully check the continuity of the uh, of the circuit but we know what we have to do first of all we'll switch over take the neutral connection out put in the cpc or the earth connection and we need to just swap these over as well take the neutrals out any of the opposite legs for the CPCs. And we'll show we'll show these recorded as well on the um, some test paperwork which I'll, I'll flash up on the screen.
Okay, so let's go again. Let's try and run away. Uh, test. We shouldn't have anything because the switch is off. Now let's switch it on and test it. 0 0.02, which is perfect. Perfectly fine. 0 0.02. And we should expect all of these readings to be more or less the same all the way around your uh, ring vinyl circuit. This one does seem to have a little bit of a, an issue. 0.12 again. If you was to continue getting a similar issue, and here we go, it's dropping 0.08 now. This, a little bit of a sticky connection in there. Um, what you would do if you had find that in a house, um, it was significantly higher, just replace the, the front of the socket or give it a spray with some cleaner spray. Um, this one's even lower, point not not. So there we go. That's um, the ring final um, circuit fully tested for continuity and polarity. So we'll flash that up on the screen um, and show you the, the test results on there. So this is a view of our uh, schedule of uh, test results here. I've just added on the, the socket circuit. I think it's a little bit more interesting than the, than the lighting one. Um, you can see here, we've added on uh, the 2.5 um, millimeter squared for the line conductor and the 1.5 millimeter squared uh, for the CPC and this here is under the ring final circuits only heading uh, is the measured end-to-end -end readings that we had so the R1 here which is the line conductor we had a reading of 0.02 ohms under RN the neutrals we had a reading of 0.02 ohms and little R2 there um, we had it which is the CPC we had a reading of 0.05 ohms and for R1 plus R2 we had a reading of 0.08 ohms so we also mentioned that in the video um, you can actually calculate what your expected values may be before they're measured um, so let's have a look at that this one here is uh, just that multiplier that we spoke about um, if I just click in this cell I can show you so all that's doing is taking 2.5 millimeter squared and dividing it by 1.5 millimeter squared there to give us 1.67 and I can do it on the calculator just to show you as well so we take 2.5 divide that by 1.5 that gives us 1.666 recurring so we'll round that up, that'll give us 1.67 that we have here. Move the calculator back out of the way. Then, if we go on to the calculated R2 value, double click in here, so you can see what we're doing now is we take the multiplier of 1.67 times back that by the 0 0.02 reading to give a calculated R2. So our calculated R2 from this was 0.03 ohms. We had a measured value of 0.05. So <coughs> that's that's fine. I mean, there's there's often um, little increases in resistance. Um, the accuracy of the meters, the connections you made, etc., can you know push the measured value slightly away from uh, from the calculated. Uh, and we also find that within the R1 plus R2 values as well because I added in this little um, column here to look at calculated R1 plus R2 so let's have a look at that and click in here so this is taking R1 plus R2 so 0 0.02 plus 0 0.05 and then dividing that by 4 to give us our calculated R1 plus R2 of 
2 ohms. So let's just show you that on the calculator as well. Clear that one off. So we take 0.02, which is R1, plus R2, which is 0.05, plus 0.05. And then divide all of that by 4 to give us 0.175. And if that's rounded up, that will give you 0 0.02. In fact, I can show you in here. We'll just give you the... Take that to another decimal place. Gives you 0.175, which we have on the calculator here, but most meters only read to two decimal places, so it gets rounded to 0.02 that we have there. But you can see our highest reading of R1 plus R2 when we read it on the front of the uh, the front of the sockets with the meter. Um, it was the highest obtained reading we had um, when we had them. Uh, uh, the CPCs and the light conductors in the uh, cross connected to take the R1 plus R2 reading. Now you recall that was a the highest reading was taken on that sticky socket. Um, there was a bit of a poor connection on the. In fact, those sockets were not a high high quality socket. I just put some cheap sockets on the front of that test rig, and um, I, I don't think I should have. I swapped them out later and actually tested it for a uh, swapped them out with an MK front and there was a, a much better reading and probably should have made the video with the MKs on and probably for future ones I might do that I might just swap those old sockets out and put the uh, put the MKs on there. So if you uh, if you enjoyed the video thanks a lot for watching and um, maybe if you do like it hit subscribe hit the like button and um, yeah if you want to get notified of new videos click the bell as well. And yeah, by all means, um, add some comments. Uh, all comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, I'd like to get some feedback. So um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.